Hello and welcome back to part 2 of this series where we make a cute little robot which we have here. Uh, last time we ended off with this model right here and today we are going to be working on this a little more adding some greeble and then uh, making a rig for it. So the first thing I still want to do is just add in some more details on the back since it's really empty right here. So to do that I will probably add in a panel uh, right here. So inset the face and extrude it inwards to something like this and we can add some buttons right here if we just duplicate these faces separate them so we get the angle right and then we can just make this a circle to by subdividing it and then with the loop tools tool we can right click uh, first we have to enable loop tools so go to edit preferences and search for loop tools this should be pre-installed with blender and now if we right click we can see the loop tools and you make this a circle and then just scale it inwards till we get something like this Then we can extrude it to make a button and we will do the same with this one subdivide it twice and then to circle and now we can scale this inwards as well probably make it a little bit smaller and extrude it and then i will add something here as well so just select all these faces inset them by pressing i and then extrude like along the normals to get this kind of ridge and this is pretty much all i'm going to do with the back sides maybe i'll come back later and add something but uh, i don't want to add too many details for the legs i wanted to add in some uh, buttons as well some hinges so right here in the middle i'm going to place my cursor and then just add in a, a cylinder with about 16 subdivisions and rotate this 90 degrees and just place that right here so now we've placed these on every single leg and we can join those together with the leg parts and if we just go into the edit mode as we can see in the inside of this uh, cylinder there's a face that we don't really need so i'm going to delete that face and then just join them up with the other face delete those faces and these as well so right now i'm just making the topology better by just looping these together so we don't have this massive end gone in the middle and my goal for this is to get some edge loops here so we can connect them to the circle and we just have to find out how many we need so right now we have this one in the middle one on the side and one here so that's basically just a a half of a cube and we need one two three four and we can use these ones for that So now we have a quad here, 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 and we'll do this on this other side as well. So now we have perfect quad topology, and we can connect this with this loop cut as well, uh, bridge edge loops. And as you can see, everything connects really nicely together. And then connect this together with the um, grid fill. So if you press Control F, you get this uh, grid fill option right here. If you click this you get this uh, nice topology and this is how we're going to fill up our uh, circles and now i'm just going to do that for the other side as well so now we've uh, finished this one which is really nice and i added some uh, nice things here and we can just mirror this on all the other sides so we're just going to delete the other ones and just select this and click mirror and mirror it along the center piece so mirror object will be the center and then just click Y as well. So we get all four sides and we can apply this and we have all our hinges right here. If we want, we can add a panel here and we can make a little display on here once we add some textures. And this is all up to you what you want to do now. You can add in some more panels or you can add in uh, nothing else. It's all up to you what you want your little robot to look like it's not the end of the world if you do this later so let's go and make a rig for this guy so first what we need to do is make sure that everything is a separate object so we need to separate uh, this so select everything and then buy loose parts and then everything that's loose gets a new object and make sure this has its own uh, origin point so everything is a separate object and it has its own uh, points except for this one need to merge this together and what you can do now is just add in a armature a single bone 
and we need to see this so we go over to the wireframe mode and now we can see our bone and what we're going to do is just selecting one of the vertices on our main object so this one uh, the bottom face and just placing our 3d cursor there and then moving the armature to there as well so if we go in wireframe we can see it's perfectly in the middle and then we need our cursor to be right here and we can go into the armature and place the uh, top bone to the cursor as well so the bone is just exactly as, as big as our head object and from there we can extrude and make other bones to control different things so on the bottom side we can get a a bone to the bottom so extrude and then place this to the 3d cursor and this bone will move uh, like rotate the bottom part but it cannot actually uh, do much else it could probably uh, rotate a little bit like this extrude this part to the 3d cursor i think it works a little bit better so now we can move this like that yeah that works much better we also need a bone in this part of the leg so we need to extrude it again and then one more and this one is just going to be flat on the ground and straight that way and this will be our control bone so we have our rig and we're just going to do that for the other four sides as well so now we have our bones and we just need to parent our object to uh, those bones so we can merge everything together and then grab our armature and select that and then Control p and then just uh, with empty groups and now we can uh, make our own vertex groups so for a robot we don't want to use automatic weights since everything just is really black or white with the vertex groups there's not really much uh, bending going on so we can go over to the bone groups and just select them all and make uh, some vertex selections so the first thing we need to do is just figure out which bone is which so we can see that in the bone property here we can see this name is bone we can rename this to body to make it more to make it uh, easier to look at and i'm just going to rename them all so for the legs i'm going to do uh, front left for our character this is the front left leg and just name them all that so the front left uh, one and then front left two and as you can see everything is renamed here as well we don't have to do that so that's really nice and we can just uh, make a selection of every single one so now what we can do is just uh, go into face select and then hit l on every single object we want to parent to the body so that's this part and then we can just assign this to the body and then go over to the spring and select the str spring and assign it to the spring and then you know what to do so i think everything is uh, perfectly uh, applied so now we can check to go into pose mode and then just rotate this and as we can see yeah everything works pretty fine uh, this doesn't work though if we rotate this the whole leg moves so maybe we need to parent that to uh, the middle part so i think the best option is to delete the uh, middle uh, bones right here since they don't really add much but trouble and now if we go into post mode we can rotate everything perfectly fine we also don't get those weird issues with scaling anymore so this is really the way to go so now what we can do is just add in inverse kinematics and to do that we need to separate these bones so go into edit mode and then click y so now they're separate and go into pose mode and then select that separate bone and then shift select the bone you want to ik with then shift i to active bone and then if you move this you should see your rig start to move and we just do that with the other ones as well shift i 
active bone, shift I, active bone, shift I, active bone. And now we have a perfect rig for our little guy. But this IK rig is really perfect if we want to add in a walk cycle, which we are going to do. So I think we are perfectly uh, finished. We just need to check if it bends and it does. So we need to add in some uh, bone constraints because as you can see, if we tilt it like that, our, our rig starts to move. And that shouldn't really happen in a robot since it's just a, a one dimensional uh, rotation. So it shouldn't move in that direction. So we need to fix that. So we need to go to the bone uh, properties and then go over to inverse kinematics and set the stiffness to the max or just lock all the axes. And now as you can see it doesn't move and we still need to lock this one. And now it really doesn't move at all. We can still move our bone and just find the one axis that doesn't mess with anything. So we just want to unlock everything and set the stiffness to the maximum. That seems to work uh, the best. So just do that everywhere. And now it shouldn't really rotate as much. It still does a little bit, but not too much. So for the walk cycle, what we're going to do, what we're going to do is just make it follow a curve. So we can move it up. And then just add in a curve and just probably add in a NURB circle and just rotate this to stand up and this will be our walk cycle it will be better if we use a bezier circle so something like this and just let these uh, bones follow it so with the bone constraint follow path and just set this to the curve and now we can animate the offset and the curve is probably too big so we need to shrink that down a little bit go back into post mode and now we can see it moves really nicely It's still going to high, as we can see with the glitching here, right there. So we need to change that as well. We just need to fine tune this walk cycle until it looks right. And just do that with the other bones as well. And now we can control all of these with a driver. So click hashtag frame and then divide it by like 50 something. See how that looks. And on the opposite side, so the mirrored side, we need to do that the same thing as well. So hashtag frame and then I did uh, multiply by two. And then on the other side, we need to do uh, something like 50 and then plus the frame. So hashtag frame times two plus 50. So that one gets a different cycle. And then to just do the same thing here. Frame times two plus 50. And if we go into object mode, we can preview this walk cycle. And it looks really cool. The only thing we need to add is that the head bobs up and down as well. So something went wrong with my rig, so I had to remake it. But now we have uh, our rig again. And it's pretty much just the same thing. But I want to make it so we can move the head and everything moves with it. So to do that, I think we probably... So to fix this, we don't really need those bones. So we can move this up. And then we can just parent everything to there. So I'll just select this and set this to the bottom. And now our character will remain with its head in this point, but it will move its bottom to fit the legs. 
So as you can see, it's still really rough. It walks really uh, just aggressively. So I've changed the size of the curve and not really done much with or the bones. But if we just add in a plane, we can see, we can check to see if it walks on the ground. And as you can see, it does. And now we need to find if it's like this, so perfectly off the ground. We don't want that. So we need to fix our curve to uh, fix that. So like this, it's still just a little bit, but not too much. There's always one foot on the ground at least. And this looks pretty cool. So now we have our funny robot walking. So this is how you rig uh, the robot. In the next episode, we're going to be looking at uh, applying some materials to this one. And I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>